Can you take a photo of me? Just, just one. Just one. Uh huh. Okay, here we go. One photo. Is this good? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Uh, did you take it? Yeah. Mm, I don't really like it. Can I get one more? This happens all the time. You said one photo. Why does this happen all the time? Is this you? Do you make your friend or your girlfriend cry all the time? Well, you need to keep watching this video. Also, if you're the friend crying, you can share this video share to your video. friend who made you cry. Maybe you shouldn't, you should just find new friends. But keep watching the video and we're gonna learn how to take good photos of your friends and partners. All right, in all seriousness, I'm going to be teaching you how to photograph your friend, your partner, your loved one, and your family. This is going to be a beginner crash course. I'm going to be going over six different elements of photography, and that's starting with intention, location, lighting, communication, posing, and framing. So I'm going to have my friend and assistant, Lucero, standing in as my girlfriend today. And starting out with the first element, intention. Now, intention is the most important step. There's a reason why it's number one. It's the heart and soul of this whole train. It's what's going to drive you to all of this. If your intention isn't there, then forget it. You can leave the video because you're just going to be like Chad over here in the earlier skit being like, okay, bro. This happens all the time. You said one photo. What? Whether you have the techniques or not, if your mind and heart isn't in there, then it won't be a good time. My intention is to, again, take beautiful photos of her. And that also means I want to be taking the first few steps to initiate that and not just wait like Chad, sitting there on my phone and being asked and having it be like a chore. Expanding on the mindset just a little bit more before we get into location, I want you to think about being a director, not just this passive photographer who's here just to click a button and become a finger. And what I mean by that is when I see a location like this, I don't just say, Hey girlfriend, just go stand over there. What I do is, let's say we're walking. La di la di la. Oh my gosh, this wall is gonna look so great with your outfit. Can I have you uh, like just leaning like this? <gasps> that looks so good. That way you're putting yourself into the shoe of whoever you're photographing. Going into location finally, the best thing to think about is thinking simple. When you're looking for a background, just look for a solid color like right now we have blue it actually just kind of worked out that lucero has this beautiful like pastel of a outfit today that works with the blue i personally wouldn't go for like bright and bold backgrounds like this i'm more of a beige neutrals light gray black white kind of guy i mean you can kind of see it in my outfit too but starting out if you're just doing this for the first time keep it simple find a solid background nothing too crazy like graffiti like if we look back over there there's a whole lot of graffiti and some people really like that but okay. i don't want to be photographing the art on the wall i want to be photographing the art that's right in front of me <laughs> location also ties in a lot with lighting you're gonna notice right now we're in the shade and on this camera you're gonna notice over there, we have like the sun coming through and over here is the shade. Sun can be good, but it can also be really, really terrible for you if you don't know how to use the sun. Being in full shade means that there's no harsh shadows on Lucero's face. As we come out here, it's really bright and Lucero has to be like this. She has to squint. And if you chin up a little bit, you gotta notice there's like these harsh shadows on her nose right now, right? And on her cheekbones which doesn't really help in taking a flattering photo. Unless Lucero told me, David, I just really want to highlight my nose, but just my nose, then I would just, you know, now only her, it's like a spotlight on just her nose. Typically, we don't want to do that. So let's go back into the shade here. And we should be able to see this too, how beautifully the lighting changed. Find the spot with big shade and there'll be very little room for error. Going into communication. Let's say we start taking some photos over here and I'm like, boom, yay, that's awesome. And then I show Lucero. I look awkward, like, I don't know, I'm kind of derpy. The things that we tend to do in this situation is no, you don't look awkward. No, you don't look derpy. I want you to focus on really listening and not just downplaying what they're feeling. Just because we tell them they don't look awkward doesn't change how they feel or how that photo makes them feel. Communication and posing 
goes hand in hand almost. You also don't have to know how to pose to do this communication posing part either. What I want you to do is also practice just giving directions. For me, I'm a professional photographer and I can pose, Lucero and be like, do this, lean on the wall, kick your hip out, but that's not what I'm asking you to do here. That's like a little bit more advanced, but right now, practice just giving the smallest guidance and directions. And what do I mean by that? That means, Lucero, can you bring your chin around a little bit this way? Ooh, let's go for a little tilt this way. Beautiful. Let's try switching up the hands, maybe like on the waist. Nice. Okay, a little bit higher. Beautiful. Looking down towards the ground. Perfect. That's it. I don't even know if looking that way was the right thing to do or the tilt was the right thing to do, if that was Lucero's favorite angle or not. But giving Lucero things to do is going to put their mind at ease. And again, you don't have to know how to pose. Just give them small instructions, but do it with certainty. You will be uncertain when you're starting out, but still just do it with certainty. Because um, if you say, I have hands on the shoulder, and then, then she's gonna feel uncertain as well. I just want you just direction, direction, direction. Keep it like a sort of like a metronome. Like how I did here too, there was almost like a pacing, right? So I said, let's try a little chin around a little bit this way. Beautiful. Let's move the hand around a little bit this way too. Relax the shoulders here just a touch. Yes. Chin around this way, looking away this time. Nice. Go for like a little looking out into the wild. Okay, beautiful. Chin down just a touch. Nice. And that's it. Now, going into the final step of all of this is the angling and framing. I'm gonna make this really easy for you. Think of it as three different compositions and three different angles. Starting with the compositions, we have a close up and then we have a medium shot, which is sort of like the waist down just a little bit, maybe above the knee. And then we have the far out showing off all the outfit type of photo. Since we're here already, when we're taking the far out shot, the OOTD, the outfit of the day photo, what I like to do is if we're using the grid over here, a good way to think about this in almost a scientific way is to have your friend and partner within the last two blocks of your square. And if you leave the top square with just the background, it's gonna make for a beautiful photo. Let's head on into sort of that medium shot here. What I like to do with this is placing Lucero's nose on that first line that we see right over here. And then that will also end up with the second line on Lucero's waist. And that will make a beautiful shot over here. And then we're gonna go into a closer shot right over here, right at the waist. And we can go for a similar principle here. What I like to do is create a little asymmetry with this. I don't like having Lucero dead center here. I might bring her to a little bit more of maybe this corner right over here. That kind of leaves us with this point at Lucero's eye right here. And work the shoulder just a little bit. Beautiful. Those were the three different compositions. What I would say is not just stand in one location and be like boom, 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 boom. Actually move around, use your feet, be that photographer that's, you know, you know what I mean? Have fun with this. Finishing up with angling. There's three different tilts that we can use. We can go with tilt down, straight tilt, and then we have a tilt upwards. What I would recommend is try playing around with when you're closer up, try to tilt down just a little bit. And then when you're medium length, keep it straight on. And then when we move on to the far out OOTD shot, add a little downward squat, right? Feel it in the booty and then tilt up. Well, I don't need to tilt up, but <laughs> tilt up the phone. And that would be a beautiful, beautiful shot. The reason why we do that is when we're further out and we tilt up just a little bit, we're adding just a little bit more length. At least for me, my friends and my clients and my ex, they've all appreciated that. <laughs> we're gonna cut that out. In terms of the tilt down, when we're closer up, whatever is closest to the camera is what we're gonna be attracted to first. So especially when we're closer up like this and we want to engage the eyes. We want to be connected to the eye immediately and that's what the whole point of this again right we want to see the makeup we want to see the eyes we want to see the intimate connection so adding a slight little bing oh, that looks so good let me show the difference here like this right straight on mm -hmm. versus Ooh. right Ooh, yeah. it makes a difference that's also why when we do selfies we like to add a little like right it's because the lens gets closer to our eye versus just our nose so bring it up just a little bit Imagine just like a laser beam straight from the lens to you. It's gonna be hitting your eyes first. You should be a photographer. 
Um, <laughs> let's um, finish this off with just a little mini photo shoot and uh, let's do this. Cute. Let, let's actually avoid this white line over here. Yes, that's cute. Booty back just a little bit more. Nice. Go for a little tilt over this way, like real badass. Woo! You feel that one? Okay. So when I'm fixing Lucero's hair, I'm looking for little like stray hairs like this that's flying in the wind and then it just kind of plops to the shoulder. You just move that to the back. Another note of care, another note of love and observation. Honestly, all the technique can go out the window. It will make them feel good. It will make them feel cared for. So uh, look out for those things. You might not have an eye for it at first, but keep that in mind and just give it a little fix for them. Love that. <gasps> oh my god. Show off the nails, okay. <laughs> Girl, you're really big belly. We don't for a while. Can we go for like a little back, like, ooh. You gotta go like, really like, yeah, there we go. Down, 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 and three, two, one, shoot. Yes, yeah, looking over your shoulder. Ooh, through the window. Ah. Hope you enjoyed the video. Remember, if you don't remember anything else, just remember the intention. You want to make this person feel good and heard and seen and that just really begins with let me take a photo for you. That's that simple. If you enjoyed this, share this with all your other friends that need to learn photography. Make sure to check out all these other videos that uh, you missed from my channel. Subscribe if you haven't. Leave a comment, like, and share. See you guys next time. Okay. <laughs>